Hey now, and welcome to the KC Toy Reviews. We are here today with, well, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure I 100% even know what the goddamn name of this thing is. There are so many names and stuff plastered all over the front of this box, but what I am picking up on this box is the Prognitor Effect. I do believe that's a series, and there's a couple more of these figures in this series. But beyond that, I don't know if I'm butchering this, but I'm seeing Date Massamoon MCTJ03. Date Massamoon MCAT, whatever the hell we want to call this thing. I am going to immediately break it to you and spoil the fun by saying that this is an absolute goddamn masterpiece. On top of that, it's going to get one of the highest reviews I've ever given in the nearly two years I've been doing this. And if you're at all curious why, well, then let's go ahead, hold each other's hands, comb through those details, and dive right the hell goddamn in. Tell me! All right, so here we are with the, well, I'm not really sure what the hell this thing is called. The Prognitor Effect Date Massamoon MCAT, as I did hint at immediately in the beginning of this video. And clearly, as you can see in front of us, this piece by Mosho Toys is an absolute masterpiece. So beautifully crafted and so well put together that before this review is even done, I have immediately been figuring out how to pre-order and get all Mosho collectibles in front of me. Now, unfortunately, there is one complication that lies in front of me. This review is going to be goddamn hard. This thing came with so many accessories. It has so many intricate parts. It is so beautifully crafted and so well done that the question is, how can I get through this within 15 to 20 minutes and not drag everybody's time for another hour? Because I could go on and on and on due to how elegant this piece is. It is almost a rabbit hole of information and articulation and overall sheer brilliance that has been put into this piece. The vibrant colors alone make me want to crap my pants. And I might need to specify, why would you want to crap your pants, Casey? Well, that's simple, because I'm so goddamn excited. Who wouldn't want to crap their pants everywhere when they see something excited like this? He's got swords. He's got guns. Come around downtown, up, right, down, up, right, down, left, and right, downtown, right, down. And it's that simple. He's out of control with weapons. So I'm going to start spitting out just some random things as we go through, shot by shot, because as I've stated a hundred times, this thing's out of control. Now, I'm going to be the bearer of bad news immediately and say that the chess piece does light up, but I didn't get the batteries. I mean, Mosho, if you're going to include this incredibly vibrant and light up piece, give me some batteries. Because when I get these things, I review them immediately. I'm not going to wait two to three days to get some stupid C C11 or C13G1953 batteries in. The fact that the battery is called a CG-1953-11 or whatever the hell those things are called is preposterous. Either include them or just make it a standardized battery that I perhaps have on hand. And I know that's a tall ass because a standard battery is a double A AA or triple A. But who the hell has a C11, C13G-1953-A67 battery on hand? And the fact of the matter is none of us. I can say that the light-up feature is actually pretty nice. I've seen it in a couple other reviews. They did a good, whoop, almost knocked them over. Did a good job at that piece there. Um, this is basically the on button. And what happens is you get a nice little symbol that lights up on the chest here. And then his eyeballs. Uh, I think I have these little, let's see if I can get one of them off here. Oh, that's not, I almost snapped that piece. Oh, that piece came right off. Anyways, his eyeballs light up green as well. Um, just again, in the future, Mosho, try to include batteries or something that might be a little bit more standardized so that we have it either on hand or it's included right out of the package. I do collect Gundam. I do build Gundam. 
And the reason I preface by saying that is I've never seen this system of the way these hands click on. You're basically just clipping them on. It's as simple as that. And it might sound like a really simple thing for me to kind of be reviewing or harping on, but I collect one six scale and putting the peg system on hands is absolutely atrocious sometimes. It was an absolute pleasure swapping out the hands in and out. Zero complaints. It was a very smooth process. Now onto one of the only bad experiences I had in this entire unboxing, the hands. Now, as I mentioned just now, clipping the hands on and off, very smooth, very easy process. Fit in a sword or any type of handle into the circular hole that you see in the hand here was insanely hard. I mean, this is a very stereotypical, that's what she said comment, but you had to jam that thing in there to the point where it felt like it didn't fit at first. And well, I'm going to show you what happened. And sorry, Mosho, my, my thumb broke off. <laughs> Nobody wants to break their thumb as soon as they get it out of the box. And it's just insane how well this figure was put together and they could not come up with a better hand system that you had to basically goddamn jam all the weapons in that hand. Yeah, that's right. You gotta jam the weapons in that hole. <laughs> yeah, get those weapons right through that hole <laughs> right there. I, I also absolutely loved about this figure is that you can basically put all the weapons and swords and almost every accessory that he came with on him. Whether you want to put these two pieces on the back, you can put this sword on his side. Um, we have these gun holsters for his regular pistols that you'll see throughout the video. You can put them on his thighs the way they are there or you can actually put them on the back where this sniper rifle is. The top piece is a little bit different here. If anybody even cares, I'm not sure any... Oh, the sword almost fell out of there. I mean, it's a good time to show. Pretty fantastic details. I mean, we'll, we'll go into this a little bit later. And due to how easy the process is, I mean, you basically, there's just little holes and pegs all over come around downtown this thing. So see if we can pull this right out of here. And that's right. You see that peg there? You have to jam it right in his ass. So you just take this. <laughs> All right, let me try that again without being super immature. And I, I, for some reason, I knew this was coming. I saw another video of some guy, hilarious review, and he said the same thing. I mean, you're basically jamming these pieces up his ass. So you take this piece here, the first peg here, you jam that right in his asshole there. And just... Jam it right there. Yeah, I just put that piece right in there. We have another similar hole here. Um, it's a box. I'm not sure why they went with a, a box instead of a hole, but it works. So you're going to go ahead and plug that piece on there. Bada bing, bada boom. You jam that thing right up his ass. And I can't even say it without laughing. Like I said, bada bing, bada boom. You jam that thing right up his ass. And then you plug the other piece that's jammed into his ass onto the sniper rifle. And it holds it there perfectly. Now, the top piece. So, as you see again, that one plugs right on his back just like that. Super easy. And then this one plugs straight up into his ass and his butt down there. Now, this is probably a perfect time to do it because we're really on the topic of jamming this up his ass and stuff. There's another piece that you have to jam. And that's right here on his grundle. So, we're kind of looking right under the grundle area here. And this is the first time doing this. So, this looks super inappropriate. But... Boom, you have that, and then you have this piece that was included. So if you want to put him in any type of flight position, <laughs> it's just going to look super inappropriate right now. Blah, just jam that right up his grundle, and wow, look at this guy now. He's basically flying. And I mean, Jesus Christ, look at how amazing this is. The posability options when this is jammed up his grundle like this is incredible. It feels very sturdy, and I will show this in a little bit. This clips onto an absolutely next-level amazing stand, and just all together really adds to the dynamic poses that you can put together on this piece. I cannot believe how easy this guy is to pose and how sturdy he feels on this stand. And you can't tell through film, obviously, but he has some weight to it. This is a metal build. So this piece has some weight, and the fact that those things paired together with this stand is not wobbling, all I can say is the quality of this figure continues to shine. Now, let's quickly pause in a simple pose, no weapons, no crazy articulation, and focus again quickly as I mentioned the very vibrant blue color scheme throughout this figure. The paint application, the decals, 
the ins and out of all the bends and articulation throughout this figure are absolutely immaculate. Now, as far as a head sculpt, I mean, dare we say head sculpt? This is, oh, I basically just took the top of his head off. This is where he put the batteries in, and this piece does come off very, very easy. So we're going to go ahead and push that back down here. But here's the head sculpt. I did remove those little eye pieces that were on there. And again, there's not too much to rave about, but it looks amazing for a mech. I'm not sure I would have asked for much more. We make our way down to this LED piece here that, again, I failed everybody. I'm not going to light it up during this video. And again, a quick glance to the fantastic decals throughout the shoulder pieces. And I'll try to note as much as I can as we go through here. Obviously, articulation, as I've said several times, incredible. We have double-jointed elbows. This is a metal frame underneath, so, so there's absolutely no fear of damage depending on how you want to articulate and pose this guy. The hands, as I noted earlier, again, clip on there really nicely, have fantastic articulation. And, oh, that one came right off as I was doing that, but it, it clipped right back. Oh, my God, I'm going to break this guy. A really nice motion to all the hands. Pretty sure there's like a pivot in the waist in the top piece here. I mean, we can pivot left and right here, and then I think we can shift it to the top. There we go. You can shift those pieces there. So there's a lot of movement. I, I'm pretty scared to actually push it, really. I, I think some of these pieces can probably go a little bit more than I'm showing off here, but I'm going to leave it as that. Whether it matters to some people or not, all these kind of pieces down here can go up. It's very common of Gundam. And wow, again, look at the goddamn detail, even underneath these pieces here. But usually these pieces go up so you can move around the legs kind of however the hell you want. And then you bring them back down to the place that you want to fold them. One last shot to the Grundle area where we kind of shoved that thing right up there earlier to put him in those fantastic dynamic poses. And then as we see, the legs are on a ball joint. I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want with the legs here. Amazing articulation. And then the same thing with the knees. As far as the elbows, they are double jointed. There's really an incredible range of motion to all these here. And then I think it's probably pretty obvious, but all mechs and uh, even like the three zero Transformers, they have basically a ball joint at the ankle. And you can do whatever the hell you want with this thing, left, right, up, down, everything is absolutely amazing as far as articulation goes. And I did end up putting that back piece back on there, so there, oh, no pun intended, but we can't plug that off. So if you want to put the sword on there or plug that right back downtown, right around downtown, come around downtown, right down downtown. That goes in there easy. We have the ass plug there. As we showed earlier, all the things we jam up his ass. We do have the ass plug there. We can cover that up there. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, wait, on the side here. If you want to put holsters, you can put the gun holsters. You can put the sword holsters. I mean, you can put things all around downtown, come around downtown on this guy. Absolutely. Really, as far as option goes, your imagination is the limit on this guy. Due to the range of articulation, the places that you can put the weapons, the amount of weapons, which we'll go over next. Just, just overall an absolutely stellar, fantastic job from head to toe on this piece. And before we start to round this review out, just a quick note on all the accessories. Well, as we've seen throughout the video, he comes with an abundance of weapons. For starters, I'm probably not going to go through it, but we do have this pile of hands over here. And sorry, Moshe, I'm showing this broken thumb again, so we'll try to jam that in a pile, mix that in there. Uh, we do have a pile of hands. We have trigger hands. We have fisted hands. We have open palm hands. Uh, we have this hand that's kind of going like, hey, go this way. Oh, stop. Or maybe, or maybe like this. Yes, yeah, stop. Get out of here. Stop in the name of the law. Back here, we do have the gun holsters. We did show those earlier off in the video. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody remembers, but this piece on the back here, that's right. You just jam it right up his ass. This piece here, you jam up his ass, and then you can clip on the guns, which, which add to the posability of this figure. And the overall options are truly endless. And one of the stars of the show, in my opinion, is the sniper rifle. Now, this is absolutely fantastic. As you can see, the paint application, the details, the clip is removable. I mean, why? It doesn't even make sense, but it's amazing that you can do it. And then you can move the bullets. I can take the bullets out of here. Again, Mosho. I'm not sure why, but it's incredible. There's no reason for this level of detail. I'm not sure a lot of us are ever going to take these bullets out, but you did it. And the price point that you were able to include all these things, we will harp on later, is next level. Amazing. So we could take all those bullets out. We're going to clip this thing right back in here. Oh, it fell out. We're gonna do oh, it fell out again. 
We're going to go ahead and do that for the third time, but it's not Mosho's fault. It's my fault. Bam. That's clipped back in there. Looks amazing. Dare I say it looks like something ripped straight from Mass Effect. We have this piece here. It'll actually pull out in the back, and it lifts. Oh, is this was working? Maybe it's because of this clip. Let's take this clip. When you pull out the shoulder piece in the back, it actually lifts this piece here. Um, again, it's completely unnecessary, but it's absolutely incredible that they went to that level of detail. And then if you want, you can actually take the sniper rifle piece out of here. And this just looks like a little regular blaster or like a machine gun or something like that. So as I've harped on throughout the video, the absolute insane amount of posability options are endless. I like it in this sniper rifle mode, but there are several options to display this either as a machine gun or a sniper rifle. And then last up, we have our swords. I think I showed them briefly earlier. Um, nothing to rave about. I mean, maybe they could have been die cast for the price point. I get it why they're not. Pretty decent paint application, decent weight on them. They do clip in there nicely, so you can sheath both swords. This one here obviously being a lot longer than the one under there. And as you can see, both swords have a very distinct look from one another, which adds a little bit more depth and contrast to this already incredible figure. And then we do have a bunch of blast effects. Um, you have this kind of unicorn looking one, this gigantic looking one here, and this pair of blasting effects here. And all kind of very stereotypical to say, but nice weight, nice paint application. I mean, these are awesome, awesome additions to all the, oh, drop that piece, awesome additions to the already incredible accessories. And last up for the accessories, I mean, personally, this is one of my most anticipated accessories of this entire piece. You name it, I collect it. I absolutely have an insane card collection, so I am very excited to see what's under here. And I have a feeling it's only going to be one card, but, but nonetheless, I'm very excited. So let's go ahead and do this together. And I don't know, I probably shouldn't rip this open. I should just go watch somebody else's video, but I'm too excited. I have to know what's in this package. All right, let's see what we got here. Do a little drum roll action. Oh, does it does look like we have a couple cards, and they feel nice. All right, let's see what we got. They're upside down. Oh, wow. Amazing. It's like a, let's see if we can get them to change there. It's like a 3D-ish type of card. That's awesome. Woo! That's super nice. My guess is this is probably who drives it. It's clearly a gigantic mech, and wow, that's a nice card too. What, are they trying to mess with me? Every card is upside down or not? These are some super nice cards. And here we have one of the last stars of the show. The magnetic metal plate base. Mosho, you guys killed it with this base. Now just to get scale into perspective, the base is huge. More room than we needed. However, I absolutely welcomed it, love it, and hope every single Mosho comes with this base going forward. Boom, metal magnetic base. And then here we go, kind of drum roll, the metal magnetic base. If I can push his feet down here. Um, it, the plate is heavy, so if it drops, don't think Mosho has failed you with any type of weak magnets. But this is an entire metal plate, this entire thing here. Amazing that they have included this. And then the bottom of his feet here, you can see some circular magnets. So boom, look at that. I mean, come on. He has incredible balance to begin with, and then you have magnet boots on him. I mean, man, Mosho has absolutely killed it. Earlier, we showed this thing that we jammed on his grundle. Same thing, magnets. Come on, we're going to lift it up in the background here. Boom, chicka pom bon, downtown, come around downtown. And then on top of that, we got metal boots. We got the metal grundle base in the background. We have this samurai-ish sword piece here, and I'm probably going to brutalize how we put these on here. Somebody's going to make fun of me. But look at this. I mean, we can display the swords in this incredible, huge, magnetic metal base with tons of freedom. I mean, you can move this stuff all around downtown, right down downtown. Oh, oh my God, all these swords are going to fall. Sorry about that. I'll put this one on the bottom there. Ooh, that looks a little bit nice. Oh, my. Woo! Come around downtown. Try this maybe like this. Oh, there we go. If we snap that in there. There. Looks pretty nice like that. Check that out. And there we have it. From the Prognator Effects series by Mosho Toys, we have 
MCTJ03. Dare I say that this is now probably in one of the top 10 best figures I've seen in my entire life, especially at the price point. I'm truly baffled that Mosho is able to include all these accessories, the level of detail, the level of quality, all on top of a metal build for $170 is insane. If you're not a subscriber of me, then you don't know, but I primarily review 1-6 scale figures, which are now starting to cross the $300 to $400 price point, something that could possibly deteriorate or fall apart over time. What we have in front of us, because it's a metal build, might literally last the rest of your life. If you're careful with this thing and you store it properly, this can be passed down to your goddamn kids because of the quality that Mosho has put into this. The nooks, the crannies, the paint application, the articulation, the vibrant paint scheme, all the accessories, just the overall package paired with a card opening yeah that's right that excites me and it might not excite everybody else but this came with a pack of cards that truly elevated the experience and tipped this over the edge of absolutely amazing and with all that said i think it's a perfect time to segue to a score on this figure what comes to mind might be the highest score i've ever given on this channel and that's going to be a 9.6 out of 10, a nearly flawless figure. Not only does it look amazing, it feels incredibly heavy. The quality and love put into the creation of this figure is something that I haven't seen in years. And with a 9.6 out of 10 and $170, you would be goddamn crazy not to pick this up if it piques your interest. Because I guarantee this will cross the $250 to $300 price point on eBay in the aftermarket. I mean, I shouldn't even say it, but I'm shocked that Mosho even charges $170. I'm not sure how they get away with that or even making any money because this is a $250 figure easily. But I'm going to shut the hell up. I'm never going to say that again. We want to pay $170 to $200 on all these upcoming Mosho figures, which is what I'm seeing them rounding out at. But before it sells out, definitely try to pick it up at that price point. Because mark my word, it will skyrocket due to the quality and size of this figure. But we have to harp one more time on that incredible stand. A big gigantic metal plate with some pretty nice details throughout it. Paired with a magnet system on the bottom of his feet. On the bottom of the display system that you jam right up his ass and his grundle. And then that really nice beautiful sword holder. It is just one of the coolest, most brilliant stands that I have ever seen included in a figure. And at a 9.6 out of 10, I cannot wait for every single Mosho release coming forward. I mean, I cannot stress that I will pick up every single release by this company going forward, and I'll probably try to pick up what I can from their backlog unless it has crossed that three to $400 price point. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up with a 9.6 out of 10 with the Mosho MCT. That's right. Date, effect, prognator effect. I don't give a crap what we're calling this thing. It is one of the best figures I have ever got my hands on. And I'm going to get it on in another few seconds. Well, I'm not going to get it on with the figures, but I'm going to get my hands on it again as I do that end thing that I always do. Anyways, KC Toys, Mosho, I absolutely cannot wait for your goddamn next figure because this thing is amazing. Catch you guys next time. Ah!